Hey guys, uh, it's Noah Kemboy, and uh, in this tutorial, I'm going to continue uh, with whatever you had started in the contacts application. In this application, uh, in this tutorial, I will teach you now how we can create a table. So, uh, to do that, simple. First of all, we will need to create a method, and let us call this method phone book. So, that's the name of the method. So, in this method, uh, sorry, uh, just put it into curly brackets, and then, yeah, now we are good. Now, we'll declare the first string, uh, the table name. So, let us call this uh, the variable uh, table name, and uh, into strings. Now, let us type in the name of our, of our table. Uh, we'll call it uh, contact, and then I think that's it. And then now we will need a try catch statement. So, because we, we are going to put some SQL uh, queries here, so we want a try catch uh, statement. So, this try catch statement uh, tries something, it tries an SQL uh, query. If uh, there's an area error uh, that is produced, it cuts the exception or the error. And you can decide to print out the error. And for this case, you can see there is an SQL exception. Uh, and you can you can decide to import the SQL exception uh, this this library actually uh, this SQL exception this one if uh, you can't get it. So after after that, now uh, let us uh, we can just even. Don't worry about uh, that error because we have not typed any scale command. That's why it, it uh, is telling us to remove the, the catch clause. So after that, we can, let us just print out the error. So we can just print out ex. Uh, that's the variable for error. Now let us now create a connection. Uh, we'll make the first statement. Uh, uh, create statements. So we want to create some statements. So uh, now that we've done that, uh, I want to introduce you to the database metadata. So we will be putting some, uh, want to know some metadata from the database. So I'll call this variable dpf and then uh, we'll get the metadata from the connection we have just gained, this connection, uh, the URL. The URL to the embedded driver. So, so for doing that now, let us do some imports. And then, uh, so if you have not imported, I uh, just type in some some commands. Uh, so this is the database metadata a library. So make sure you import the SQL libraries. Uh, don't import the bin. So, some some of these libraries. Uh, you may get some of the errors because of the libraries you have imported. So now, after doing that, now we need a result set to get whatever the the the, the, the results from the metadata results. So I'll type in the result set and I'll name it tables. So uh, here I'll just get the the. the So I'll just press null, null, and then I'll change the table name to uppercase. And this one should be null. So we'll be converting uh, the table to, 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 to uppercase. And then after doing that now, uh, we will check if this table exists. So this is how we check. After getting the metadata, uh, and the results set you can, you can check if it exists because if it exists, uh, if the result set was successful, meaning the table exists, uh, the query was successful. Now, type in some message like uh, you can decide to say 
system and you can say put some string values and say the table contact we just copy the name exists I mean that's it so after doing that now else we can put some else command meaning if that table doesn't exist now we will now uh, create the table so we'll create some command uh, some statement stmt as you can create remember so here and create some statement. So I will execute some SQL command, uh, some SQL, and uh, here we go. And, uh, so here I'll create table. Table then I'll copy this tree and add to this. So it will create the table name that we have placed here. And then after doing that now you can add the string again and then the next thing now let us put in uh, the columns so now press the enter button now we'll be placing so, so for the first one we'll press an, an id uh, the first column will be an id it will be an auto increment so this is the, co the code that uh, sets everything so uh, I'll be going in a faster mode, so let me just uh, code it first, then I uh, will be explaining the syntax. So. So the first column is an ID, it is an integer, and uh, by default it is not null. So uh, when it is an auto increment, so this is the code that uh, sets it as an uh, auto increment. It is generated always as identity. It starts with one, an increment by one. So it will be one, two, three, four. So increment by one, and uh, we set it to be a primary key. So for the second column, uh, we need the name. So uh, it will be the name. It is a variable character. Uh, character. Uh, we can limit it to 200, to 200 characters. And then after doing that, just place a comma. Next. And now here again, we need a phone book. Uh, any a phone column. So phone column. It is a variable character. Uh, you can just place it into 200 characters again. Or you can just no. Sorry. You can just decide here to be 12 characters. And then uh, remember to place a comma then the last one uh, not, not even the last one let us place the residence it's a variable character also uh, why i choose to uh, put most of my things to be variable characters because uh, most of these residents can hold uh, more than just a text uh, they have they have just places that uh, can only in a number uh, there are places even that are called uh, by the by a number which is not text in, a, in computers so now that we have done uh, we can just decide even to put a timestamp so i'll just put a time and uh, this one is timestamp that is the the data type and then can set the default so the default The 
current time stamp. Uh, now that you have that, uh, uh, I think you are good to go. Uh, I think you are good to go. So, because you have created the statement, and we have executed the statement just as it is, uh, now we are good to go in creating the table. So that's how you create a table in JavaFX. So when you build this application and run the application, so in the next tutorial, I'm going to show you now how you can add data to this to, to this table. Uh, we will create a simple interface that will contain uh, the name, uh, text field, the phone, and the residence. So now this is how we are gaining now to create a very big software because uh, in, uh, this, if we have reached this stage in the database, I will show you now how we can create a very big database uh, software. So as usual, uh, the Hello World application still exists. Uh, the Click Me application, but uh, uh, you can see we have a database. And uh, even if we run this application again, uh, remember there was this message so sorry this method cannot be run because first of all we have not called it so copy the name of the method uh, come to the constructor below the create connection and then now first of all call that there now build your application and uh, to make sure that this application runs we'll run it twice the first one obviously it will not give us because it will execute this one and then the next one, when we cancel the application, uh, it will show us uh, if this one exists or not. Uh, so there's an error here. So let us just. So there's an error, and uh, it says uh, at line one. So and let's check our statement. Sorry, this was this is not supposed to be a curly brackets, it's supposed to be a brackets, opening brackets. Because yeah, now I think we are good to go. And uh, since we have this one, we also need another one here. So now we are good to go. Uh, you can decide your build your application and run. So these errors are very important. It is very important to know how to debug your application because uh, when you are doing a very big software, you will always encounter errors in applications. There is no way you can type a very big software and uh, just go error free. It is just more next impossible. Like, you always have to encounter, but it is always good because uh, when you run uh, these applications and you treat, you treat yourself on how to debug your application, you will always be the best programmer. So, we have run the first time the application, so obviously we assume that it created the, data, uh, the table. So let us run it for the second time, because uh, what it will be checking it will getting, be getting the instance of this class database, and you can see there is a message here: the table contact exists. So uh, our contact uh, table was created successfully, and now it already exists. So that was it about. Uh, creating tables in JavaFX and FXML uh, in the embedded Derby database. So thank you for watching this video. So in the next tutorial, I'll be showing you much. So see you later.